Welcome to the Medtronic online training for changing the Minimed Mio Advance infusion set. This course will show you how to fill the reservoir and insert the infusion set. Do not attempt to insert the infusion set prior to receiving in-person training. Before you begin, wash your hands and gather the items you will need to fill the reservoir and change the infusion set. It is important that you follow the instructions as they are shown in this training. Do not insert the infusion set until you have been told to do so. Remember, two to three hours after inserting a new set, you should check your blood glucose. Checking your blood glucose is the only way to confirm that your infusion set is properly inserted and that you are receiving insulin. Therefore, it is best to avoid changing your infusion set at bedtime. Let's get started. To begin, press Select. Then press down to Options and press Select. Select Reservoir and Tubing and press Select. Select New Reservoir. The pump will instruct you to remove the infusion set from your body and to remove the used reservoir from the pump. Remove the infusion set you are currently wearing from your body. Then, remove the reservoir from your pump by turning the tubing connector a half turn counterclockwise. Safely dispose of the used infusion set and reservoir. In order to make room for a newly filled reservoir, the piston inside the pump will need to be moved back to its starting position. To rewind the piston, select Rewind. The rewinding screen will appear while the piston rewinds. Once the piston is rewound, Rewind Complete will appear on the screen. Your pump will then instruct you to fill the reservoir and connect the tubing to the reservoir. You can now set the pump down and prepare to fill the reservoir. Before you can begin filling the reservoir, you will need to clean the top of the insulin vial. To reduce the risk of air bubbles, make sure the insulin vial is at room temperature. When you're ready, wipe the top of the insulin vial with alcohol and wait until it dries. Remove the new reservoir from the package. Let's stop for a minute and look at the different parts of the reservoir. The transfer guard attaches the reservoir to the insulin vial so it can be filled with insulin. The reservoir barrel holds your two to three day supply of insulin. The O-rings prevent insulin from leaking out of the reservoir. The plunger rod is used to fill the reservoir with insulin. Now, pull the plunger so the top of the O-ring is positioned at the amount of insulin you plan to put in the reservoir. Be careful not to pull the plunger completely out of the reservoir. Hold the reservoir by the blue transfer guard and connect it to the insulin vial by pressing down. Be careful not to push down on the plunger during this step. It's very important to push air into the vial before taking insulin out. To do this, keep the insulin vial upright, place your thumb on the plunger, and firmly push the air from the reservoir into the insulin vial. Continue to hold down the plunger with your thumb. Flip the insulin vial over so it is on top. Make sure you are holding the vial with your other hand. Slowly release your thumb pressure from the plunger rod and the reservoir will start filling with insulin. When the reservoir stops filling, slowly pull down on the plunger until the top black O-ring lines up with the desired amount. Keep in mind, every small line on the reservoir represents about 20 units of insulin. Tap the reservoir hard enough to make the air bubbles rise to the top of the reservoir. Slowly push up on the plunger rod to move the air bubbles back into the insulin vial. Pull down on the plunger to fill the reservoir to the number of units desired. Repeat as needed until air bubbles are removed from the reservoir. Look in the window of the blue transfer guard to make sure no air bubbles remain. Any air bubbles the size of champagne bubbles are normal, so don't worry about these. To avoid getting liquid on the top of the reservoir, flip the reservoir over so the reservoir is on top. With the vial down on the table, hold the transfer guard with one hand. With your other hand, turn the reservoir counterclockwise and then pull straight up to remove it from the transfer guard. Be careful not to press on the O-rings. Disconnect the transfer guard from the vial and dispose of it properly. Remove the infusion set from the package. Let's review the parts of the infusion set. The Minimed Mio Advance comes in two separate pieces. One piece is the tubing with a connector on either side, and the other is the insertion device that holds the insertion piece. Let's start by looking at the tubing. On one end of the tubing is the tubing connector that attaches to the reservoir. On the other end is the infusion site connector that is attached to the insertion piece. A white cap protects the site connector and is removed before connecting. Now we will look at the insertion device. The raised arrows indicate where the tubing will be when it is connected. 
Inside the insertion device is the insertion piece, which is pre-loaded into the serter. The piece is made up of the cannula housing, where the tubing is connected, and a short, thin, flexible tube called a cannula. The cannula is inserted with an introducer needle, which retracts back into the serter. Pressing the top button releases the insertion piece into the site you prepared. An adhesive pad holds the cannula in place once it has been inserted. The disconnect cover locks the top button, preventing it from releasing the set too early. Once the set is inserted, the disconnect cover then fits into the cannula housing to protect the site connector when the tubing is not attached. Make sure both the top of the reservoir and the inside of the tubing connector are dry before connecting them. Liquid can temporarily block the vents on the tubing connector. This may result in the delivery of too little or too much insulin, which can cause hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia. If any liquid has gotten on the top of the reservoir or inside the connector, start over again with a new reservoir and set. To connect the tubing to the reservoir, hold the tubing by the connector and place it on the top of the reservoir. Find the right position by turning and gently pushing the tubing connector until you feel it slide smoothly in place. Turn the tubing connector clockwise until the reservoir and the tubing connector lock with a click. The tubing connector should not be loose or come apart from the reservoir. You should not have the set inserted into your body when doing this step. Tap the reservoir to make any air bubbles rise to the top of the reservoir. Purge the air bubbles that have risen to the top by slowly pushing up on the plunger until all of the air bubbles have been pushed out of the reservoir and you see a small amount of insulin in the tubing. If you're not able to push insulin into the tubing, disconnect the tubing connector and then reconnect it. Unscrew the plunger rod counterclockwise until it completely separates from the reservoir. Be careful not to pull down on the plunger as you unscrew the plunger rod and avoid squeezing the O-rings. The reservoir is now filled and connected to the tubing. Pick up the pump to review the next step on the screen. While you are filling your reservoir, the backlight may have turned off. Press the select button to turn the screen on again. If the backlight has been off for a few minutes, your pump may have gone into sleep mode, locking the pump. If your pump is locked, press select on the home screen. You will see the unlock screen. Press the arrow that is highlighted to unlock the pump and continue to the next screen. Select Load Reservoir from the menu. The new reservoir screen appears. Since you have already filled the reservoir and connected the tubing, select Next. The next step on the screen instructs you to place reservoir into pump and lock. You will now place the reservoir into the pump. Remember, you should have already rewound the piston in your pump and you should not have the set connected to your body when performing this step. Put the reservoir in the pump and turn the tubing connector clockwise until you feel the reservoir lock into place. The tubing connector should line up with the groove in the battery cap of your pump. On your pump, select Next to go to the Load Reservoir screen. With Load highlighted, press and keep holding Select until the screen shows Complete. When you see Complete, do not connect to body, and a yellow check mark on the screen, select Next. You will now fill the empty tubing with insulin. Remove the cap from the infusion set. Hold the set so that the needle is pointing down. With fill highlighted on the screen, press and hold select. The pump screen will display the amount of insulin being moved through the tubing. Continue to hold select until you see insulin drops coming out at the end of the needle. The number of units shown on the screen will vary each time you fill the tubing. If you release select too early, just press and hold the select button again until you see drops come out the end of the needle. After you see the drops, release the select button. Hold the tubing to the light to check for air in the tubing. If you do see air, once again press and hold select until the air exits the end of the tubing. Now press right and select next. You'll see the fill cannula screen. You have successfully filled the reservoir in infusion set tubing. If you notice anything unusual after filling the infusion set tubing, such as insulin continuing to drip or squirt from the end of the tubing, do not insert it. Start over with a new reservoir and infusion set. Next, you will prepare to insert the infusion set. Next, you will select your infusion site. Some commonly recommended areas for infusion sites are your abdomen, except for the two inches around your belly button, your hips and buttocks, your upper thighs, or the back of your arms. Your healthcare professional can help you select the best sites for you. When choosing your new infusion site, make sure it's away from your previous site. If you give insulin repeatedly in the same area over a long period of time, 
it can cause the tissue to thicken and insulin won't be absorbed properly. Rotating your site is key to keeping your infusion sites healthy. Some people find it helpful to use an organized method for rotating sites. It really doesn't matter which method you use, as long as you rotate your sites. Clean your infusion site properly with an alcohol wipe or prep wipe. Allow your site to air dry. Pick up the insertion device and remove the paper backing, being careful not to touch the adhesive. Remove the disconnect cover by gently squeezing the sides and pulling it away from the insertion device. Store the disconnect cover for later use to protect the cannula housing when disconnected. Stretch the skin until smooth. Place the insertion device on the site that you have prepared. The raised arrows indicate the side where the tubing will be connected. To insert, firmly press the top button. Carefully pull the insertion device away from your body. Safely dispose of the used insertion device. Smooth the adhesive onto the skin. Hold the cannula housing steady with your finger, then push the site connector straight into the cannula housing until you hear a click. Now that the introducer needle is removed, the cannula is empty and will need to be filled with insulin. To fill the cannula, select Fill. The Fill Cannula screen will appear with either dashes or the amount you previously used. Both the 6mm and 9mm cannula sizes require 0.6 units of insulin. To change the fill amount, press Select and use the arrows to scroll to the amount needed and press Select again. If the amount is correct, press Down to fill now. Press Select. The pump will begin to fill the cannula and display the amount. Congratulations, you have successfully filled your reservoir and changed your site. From time to time, you will need to temporarily disconnect from your infusion site. Make sure you suspend your pump prior to disconnecting. To disconnect from your pump, gently hold the cannula housing steady with your finger. Then squeeze the sides of the site connector and pull it away from the cannula housing. To protect both the site connector and cannula housing when disconnected, Place the white cap on the site connector and the disconnect cover over the cannula housing. Both the site connector and disconnect cover will click when connected.